Hey everyone, welcome back to Freeze Frame, your one-stop shop, the ultimate podcast, the best place to get all of your movie and TV news, updates, rumors, theories, everything you can think of as far as, you know, this industry, as far as the film industry, as far as cinema is concerned, we're going to cover it all. We actually have some really cool news this week, stuff that I didn't think I was going to receive uh, mm, sequels cool. for or or even just updates on other movies that we have. We have some <laughs> very exciting news uh, this week. But first and foremost, I want to introduce my co-host, Ryder. My name is Luigi, by the way. You, I'm sure you guys already know. You guys under you know you hear my voice every week. You know it. <laughs> uh-huh. um, I'm the guy delivering the news. Uh, but I'm joined by Ryder. And I just wanted to ask you, Ryder, this week... Watch anything new? Did you finish any shows? Have you wrapped up anything? You binged anything new? What's going on with you? Well, I feel like it's going to be like a broken record, you know, because I'm, I'm just the, I'm the pop culture sucker, you know, I'm just, I'm feeding, I'm eating <laughs> Snyder Cut and I'm eating Falcon yeah. Winter Soldier. That's it. You know what I mean? That's it. And again, I'm getting through Fargo and it's honestly, it's kind of an episode a week. So I, I, I gotta, gotcha. I gotta kind of expand my, my taste and, and get out more, but <laughs> that's it for me each week. It's always kind of the same, you know? What about you? I got you. I, I'm I'm a little bit like a broken record from last week because I just finished the challenge this, oh, this okay. last week. I actually nice. finished that season War of the Worlds, mm-hmm. and it it just finished so perfectly because they had a re- reunion episode right after it, and it was oh, yeah. literally like all of the the drama from the past thirty three seasons just felt like it was just being aired out, and it was just oh, man. it was fun to watch. It was fun to mm-hmm. watch, and it was um, an enjoyable experience, but. Cool. Other than that, like you said, Falcon and Winter Soldier, <laughs> yeah. the Snyder Cut, and we actually have reviews for both of those shows right now, Episode 1 and the actual Zack Snyder Justice League yep, yep. out right now on Strictly Casual if you guys want to check that out. And if you already haven't, um, please like, subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening to us on audio platforms. We really you know, enjoy having you here, listening Absolutely. to the show, mm-hmm. you know, receiving the news with us and just reacting. I'm sure you're reacting at home or mm-hmm. maybe you're just tweeting about it afterwards. But we're very excited to have you here. And I want to start us off first and foremost with the Snyder Cut, talking about Justice League just for a second. Um, the Blu-ray is coming out May 25th this year. Ooh. So in a couple of months, we're going to get that. And I want to follow up with Zack Snyder isn't ruling out a sequel and Ben oh. Affleck is also considering jumping on a sequel if it all works out. Because he's saying he yes. might want to return as Batman now uh-huh. after the next Flash film, which he's okay. going to be in with Michael Keaton. Um, very excited. What are, you, mm-hmm. what are your overall thoughts about? I know we talked about it in the review about a sequel, but like the thing that it might actually yeah, happen yeah. is. <laughs> I, hey, if the fans keep petitioning for it and they keep going on social media and they keep, you know, being vocal about what they want, I think the company will, you know, they'll cave in eventually. It's going to take years, right. you know, because they're very adamant on not doing it. But I think in in time, anything can happen. And I feel like, you know, companies always want money and they'll think of a way that they can get profit from a, another sequel. And I think, who knows, we could potentially get it. And I am all for it, you know? Absolutely. I, no, I hear you. And the crazy part is we actually broke uh, HBO Max when the movie first dropped. Like, it yeah. crashed because there was just so many uh-huh. people wanting to watch this. Mm-hmm. So that alone should show you the level of hype Absolutely. and the level of support for this, you know, Snyderverse, as mm-hmm. they're they're saying it. Now they're, now the new uh, hashtag is restore yeah. the Snyderverse. Yeah, yeah. And I love that because mm-hmm. it's like we moved from release to restore. Yeah. And now, Bring you know, back. hopefully they, you know, they do it. I think... Flashpoint is actually going to be that stepping stone, I think, movie that is really going to take this world oh, and expand it. Because that, that one is multiverse. kind of like their multiverse of madness. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know? Yeah. And we're going to see it as Flashpoint. Mm-hmm. And I think it's going to be really exciting. Um, Ezra Miller, of course, we love him. You know, yeah. I, I love him. I thought his Flash was excellent. Um, but moving away from the Snyderverse and into the Last of Us world oh, now, okay. um, yeah. we have some news that actually just dropped today right before we... We did this, that season one is apparently, yes, it's going to adapt the game like we had Mm -hmm. um, discussed before, but some of the episodes are going to deviate greatly from the original, you know, like, you know, you might have like Mm -hmm. a a one episode arc that follows maybe a new character that is introduced or maybe Mm -hmm. like a new path or journey that they have to do to get supplies or something. Um, I think that that kind of stuff is honestly good for a show like, Mm -hmm. like The Last of Us. And I think what they're trying to do with that is smart because you don't want to spend all your time kind of rehashing uh, the same just, thing yeah, yeah rehashing the same thing like we people know. get bored of that yeah. it's like oh i could go play the game if i want to see that but the fact that they want to try new things i think that's great yeah, um, and kind of the, the best direction for this mm-hmm. type of show awesome awesome well one thing too i wanted to mention kind of back to standard cut this is a small thing too i don't know if you heard yeah go for it the justice league will be coming out on hbo max as well again uh it's going to be called justice is great and it's gonna be black and white i don't know if you saw they posted that recently I mean, well, oh, what do you mean like they're like they're, the they're whole releasing, snyder they're cut releasing it again 
on HBO Max, probably like another little thing that you can click. It's called Justice is Gray, and it's gonna be like the whole thing is black and white. They showed a clip wow. of it too, and it's like, oh, it's kind of it's kind of cool. It's noir style. So hey, if yeah, that's your yeah, cup yeah. Of, if that's your cup of tea, sure. But I just thought that was cool. I wanted four to hour that. film in black and white. I mean, I <laughs> yeah. might. Yeah, yeah. Just to see, just at least a little bit. I, I'm sure. I'm sure there's moments that are really cool. I just yeah. love the colors in that movie too much to watch. Oh, it I know. In black and it's white. It's awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. First headline I have right here is uh, the boys spinoff as three more young soups to the class. There's more uh, nice. more actors that they're acting, of course. Adding, of course, they're they're building the whole cast and the whole roster for the show. Of course, a lot of it's funny. I, I don't know where my oh yeah, I have it right here. Sorry, Shane Paul uh, McGee. Um, Amy Carroll, Maddie Phillips are set to star alongside Jess and Claire and Lizzie Broadway. Of course, these are a lot of younger, you know, kind of lesser known actors, but I feel like you That's can already good. kind of tell, get the vibes of who they're trying to pull and different, you know, characteristics of people. So I, honestly, it's, it's very hyped up right now already. So I'm looking forward to seeing I, I'm, that. Since last week, I think the hype hasn't stopped. And even online, like I was talking to some people while I was uh, kind of posting the show around. And people are really excited for this, like an R-rated Sky High like show, oh, very yeah. much intriguing mm -hmm. to a, a like a generation who kind of grew up on very kind of gritty TV for the ages of people that were much older than us. Like mm -hmm. some of the shows that we fell in love with now, and I'm speaking to like my age of like 20 to maybe 30 years old right now, the last 10 years um i would say we grew up on a very interesting timeline of tv like even just being alive when the office first premiered and mm. i was young your kid you, and i didn't watch it or even like parks and rec or even like mad men or the walking dead like yep. breaking bad we've like lived through like cultural events the, like i would say yes the golden age of television was the establishment mm. of television but i would say we live in the golden age of television now a modern you know, day yeah like, modern day golden the age modern sure. day golden age absolutely. like absolutely Agreed. you know um like even the fact that we're getting and this is the crazy one i was talking about at the very beginning ace ventura 3 and i'm just like wow what i guess <laughs> what? i guess while freaking jim carrey was working the sonic the hedgehog set he met one of the writers and the writer was like i'm a huge ace ventura fan i want to write it i want to write a, a third yeah. one and jim carrey was like if you write it and you can get somebody to you know produce it or make it then i'm in and i guess he went to amazon and amazon was like oh, we will put money down Wow, so you got okay. the Sonic the Hedgehog writers attached mm -hmm. to make the Ace Ventura 3 with Jim Carrey at right. Amazon, probably coming in a year or two. But I just think that that's absolutely that's, freaking yeah, insane. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's going like, to be crazy. They're just, they're just going back to everything, dude. There's nothing in the past that can't be rehashed. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, Honestly, yeah. And that's I know that a lot of people have that complaint. I know when we post on TikTok... You know, if you haven't checked that out already, we post a lot of the quick news updates there. Check that out. But we get a lot of comments. Mm -hmm. You know, we love reading you guys' comments. And there's, sometimes we get comments where people are like, it's, nothing is new. It's just a lot of reboots right. and rehashing and stuff. And yeah, that can be kind of exhausting. But like I always say, as long as you have a good team behind it, yeah, sure, bring it back. Because then it's the new generation that gets to see that. You know what I mean? That's that's how I feel about it. But absolutely, of, yeah, yeah, no, it's it's kind of like um like the SpongeBob Camp Coral, right? Yeah. Maybe you were a fan of the younger version of SpongeBob, mm -hmm. right? The the one that originally came out, but this new one is made for yeah. the new kids. Yeah. And it's absolutely. just like, oh look, let them enjoy what you once loved mm -hmm. in a new version. And I get I get that. Yeah. Well, speaking of TV, we got some more TV news here for a good TV, American Horror Story season ten. It finally made it to the Big Ooh. Ten. I know that that's that's huge for a TV show. It's called Double yeah. Feature. So the title reveals that they're going to be two horrifying stories in just one season. So this is, of course, a change like up that. for them, you know, like two different complete things going on at the same time. Maybe there's a connection there. I'm sure they they always have convoluted plots, but they always figure out an interesting way to connect it. So definitely going to be fresh for all the viewers at home that love that show. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm more than anything, I'm looking forward to who's going to be in that. You know, the 10th the mm -hmm. season, I feel like is huge for a show you mm -hmm. know like you never you never fully get to the point where you're like established i think until maybe around season four usually mm -hmm. like a show is going to stick around for a while and then to make it to season 10 like that's just great and i think that they've already said that they want to make up to like 12 seasons and they want to keep oh, okay. it going okay so nice. i'm not i wouldn't be surprised by that if you know they they decided to just keep making them but the double feature thing i think that's great that's just yeah, yeah. Mo like mm -hmm. you keep advancing the genre you know like hey yeah. mm -hmm. now we're gonna have two instead of just one because why not you know and it's like, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. great that's great 
Um, and speaking of, you know, gory horror, we're going to get a little bit of that in Mortal Kombat. We're actually going to have oh. the first opening scene be super bloody and bro- bone crushing. That's the yes. way they, de- the de- they actually described it as bone crunching, which oh, is very interesting. even worse. So that's even worse. And <laughs> yeah. it says the, the creator said fans are going to love it. So if you're a huge fan of Mortal Kombat, I think that that's going to be very exciting to jump mm-hmm. into that world immediately going into the, you know, the, the breaking Absolutely. of the, the faces and it's just destruction of the overall fighting style i think that that's just going to be so much fun to watch i think that that like if you're going to make a movie like that like it's you know like if they made an injustice movie where it was literally just fights yeah. fights 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 you have to have it violent. i'd want it to start with like a mega fight you know just Absolutely. like boom mm-hmm. like that's cool yeah that's fans cool. have wanted this for such a long time you know i think they had a mortal kombat movie when the early 90s or 80 i don't, I don't know i don't know remember when but i feel like it was kind of bad when it released and now it's kind of more like cult classic or well, i mean fan favorite i mean yeah but it's a little like oh it's cringy and kind of bad but hey this is finally the redemption mortal kombat gets so i'm happy for them i'm looking forward to seeing the violence of it because i love violent movies you know absolutely but. absolutely okay. i mean it it's it's gonna be right. very exciting how long yeah. do you know how long until that comes out that's probably like this year uh, right Definitely yeah it's this gonna year. be this year yeah it's gonna yeah, be yeah, yeah. I'm going to say late this year because we have Godzilla vs. Kong coming out soon. Actually, in a couple days here. And then we have, uh, I don't know the exact release date of it. I know you're pulling it up right now. I mean, <laughs> April 16th. April okay. 16th. Okay. So we're close. Well, soon. Next month. <laughs> That's crazy. Month. I didn't think it was that fast. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to be getting uh, that crunching of those bones very, very soon. Nice, nice. Good <laughs> to hear. Well, speaking of action-packed, we have a brand new Michael Bay film coming. And... I, Ooh, you know, I know I like that. however you feel about Michael Bay, that's up to you. But I personally just like the films because they're so stupid action. It, they're dumb stories all the time. You know what I mean? Right, but right, we have yeah. a new film. John Krasinski is teaming up with Michael Bay to produce a psychological thriller film called mm-hmm. Apartment 7A. And plot details are apparently under wraps right now. But of course, we'll be giving you more updates on uh, for then. But what do you think about that? I'm I'm like thinking about the apartment 7a i like that it kind of gives me room 204 or i think that's what it's called on hbo where it's like a, oh okay, okay. it's I a horror i think it's 203 or 103 something like that it's yeah, like yeah. a room mm-hmm. and it's like different events happen in that room but apartment what is it apartment 4b 7a yeah 7a it's just 7a <laughs> psychological i'm interested Who knows? but yeah i'm f- interested because michael bay doesn't usually do psychological yeah that's like the weird that. thing about he, it he's doing blow up action mm-hmm. and like putting robots in there and <laughs> yeah just, ridiculous stuff yeah i just don't know if he can do it but i'm excited for john krasinski yeah, i feel like john krasinski is gonna bring that michael mm-hmm. bay is gonna bring in the big budget you know and yeah that's what's gonna yep. make it that's what's gonna make mm-hmm. it um next up I, if you want to talk about major big budgets um we're talking about the mutants again the Ooh, movie okay the one that we discussed mm-hmm. two weeks ago apparently there was a huge marble leak this week that revealed the way they might join the mcu now, rumors ahead, so if you don't like things being spoiled for you, fast forward like three minutes. Um, apparently, the leaker claims that Marvel is going to have the X-Men project, codenamed The Mutants, include a movie with the name along with plans to introduce other characters into the MCU via shows and movies leading up to the actual Mutants film. Oh, so The okay. Mutants is going to be like their mega kind mm-hmm. of Avengers, yeah. and then they're going to have like the sprinklings here with the TV shows and other films, including like the intros to characters, and then all of the mutants together come together to have their own Avengers-like film. Kind of cool. Um, Instead of just having like, oh, here are the mutants, you know? Yeah, no, Um, I'm for that. Absolutely. Build up. Kind of better. Because when it comes to the... Exactly, the build up, yeah. And and that's what's great about Disney+, Plus because you get films like, who knows, even in The Falcon and Winter Soldier, you know, spoilers for the first episode, if you haven't seen that already, skip after this, but... There seems to be already hints of what could be mutants or super soldiers, however you want to take it. But I'm sure in She-Hulk or, or, you know, Hawkeye, who knows what they could introduce and already set up. Then I know it's early, but you never know with these things, you know. So I'm glad that I'm glad to hear that they're going to be building it up, you know, versus just an introduction film. Because that's never been like it's too fast, too rushed. But that's just absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm reading here this. Some of these details are really great. Um, They're saying that the mutants could have possibly started to reveal themselves right after Tony Stark said, I am Iron Man. And they're saying that the blip at this point is now the moment where they're finally starting to kind of come out of their wood, like the woodworks, right? Mm -hmm. Before they were kind of open, maybe Mm -hmm. I can use my powers. And now, like, we really don't know quite just how the mutants are going to be established. They haven't revealed that yet. But they're saying Mm -hmm. that the actual first X-Men film 
will be directly focused on Charles Xavier and Moira Magdgart and is going to be connected directly to the Eternals. So the Eternals okay. might be the ones that set it up somehow. They might explore the Brotherhood of Mutants, and mm-hmm. then they might even create some sort of X-Men team like First Class that had Cyclops, Jean yeah. Grey, Angel, Iceman, Beast. You know, hopefully we get some Magneto, yeah. Mystique, um, yeah, yeah, Sabretooth, absolutely. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're saying that the X-Men movie will focus on social issues about minorities more than anything, which has kind of already been the plot line that Fox established with the yeah. mutants. They're mm-hmm. kind of like a minority class, and they're kind of viewed that way. Um, and I but love I'm that. Just, I love that. Me yeah. too. I think yeah. it's I think it's a great way of tackling a social issue while a- also absolutely. talking absolutely. about it and mm-hmm. not just be like, right, like, either this is that. It's yeah. like very subtle. Just um, for sure. But anyways, after hearing all of that, what are your thoughts <laughs> overall? To the whole X Men, you know, I know we discussed it a little bit before, but knowing a little bit more details, mm-hmm. are you more excited? Are you still the same level of excitement? Is there anybody you want in this film, and how soon do you want it? Yeah, that, I I think what Kevin Feige is playing it safe with this. Well, not really playing it safe, but he's pacing it out because he understands right. when it comes to you know we just had all this X Men movies and all this lore, and we don't want to you don't want to rush it because it could be it could turn out bad. And so you want to pace it out because you want to have good planning. You want to make sure the story is there and the production team is there and all the casting is perfect. There's so much with the X-Men that Marvel can't mess up. And I know that they're, they're really going to take their time with it. So it could be many, many years before we see this, but I know that they have, they're, they're planning it smart, you know, and they're really taking their time with it. This is their, this is their, their, what their steamed Turkey in the oven while everything's all the appetizers are on the table. All the Disney plus shows are the appetizers. (laughs) You know? Yeah, Anyways. no, absolutely. It's got to <laughs> yeah. cook all day. Exactly. You know, it's got to cook exactly. all day. Yeah. And all day could be three years, you yeah. know? So those appetizers are going to take about a year and a half yeah. to cook yeah. just to make them chop up. <laughs> I, I hear oh, you, God, brother. Yeah. I hear you. That's mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah. Up next, we have one here for all you Sherlock fans. This is the Benedict Cumberbatch version from the BBC. Martin Freeman is agreeing with Benedict Cumberbatch that a Sherlock movie is more likely than a season five for the return. So really, he quoted recently, I think it's possible. Uh, we've all left it so that it's not a full stop. It's just a big ellipses. So, you know, it kind of came, I don't know, for, for those of you that saw the last season uh, many years ago, it kind of came full circle with the entire show. I I personally had been a huge fan of it. I'd watched it religiously and they had That's a really cool, it. for their season finale, because their show, their episodes are like two hours long. So they yeah, had yeah, it. Yeah, they were they, always super long. Yeah. They had it in the theater for the very last season finale. So I got to see with my mom and. It was cool because it was just like me and her and then some other guy like way in the bottom and like nobody yeah. was <laughs> but it was so cool it was a great it was like a movie not, you know not many american fans i hear yeah. you yeah it's because we're fans of the uh, robert donnie jr yeah Sherlock absolutely. Holmes. and i was really hoping when i when you first mentioned it to me right before we started recording you were like sherlock movie i was like sherlock holmes and then you were like no benedict uh, Cumberbatch. Yeah. and i was like brand <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh sure make it for the fans but yeah. i'm not i'm not one of them mm-hmm. um next up i have matthew mcconaughey to reprise a time to kill role in john grisom's series in the works at hbo who doesn't love a good matthew mcconaughey and look at that he's got more work he's coming mm-hmm. back to tv he's coming back to hbo and i'm very excited mm-hmm. about it i don't know much about his role in this uh, a time to kill um i don't know what what that was or when he did that but you know for the viewers out there it's coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, up next we have here uh, some, this is some Avatar news. I know you're going to probably be excited for this. Nick President confirms yeah. that there's a lot, there's a lot of content planned for the Avatar Airbender universe. I don't know if you've heard anything new about this, but this is the OG series creator, apparently Nick President. And so they're already kind of hyping it up on social media saying that they have yeah, they lots should. of spinoffs and movies, you know, already planned. So I don't know what else have you heard or how are you feeling about this so far? I haven't heard it much. Mm-hmm. I know that they want to start it off with a movie that is kind of going to stretch out their world. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's very yeah, yeah. exciting because a movie can set up di- several TV shows just by having these little moments with characters. Oh, don't, you know, we got to go get this item or, hey, this prisoner was released. Obviously, those are old yeah. um, hashed out storylines. Mm-hmm. But I think that there's a lot that you can play with, whether you want to establish them as their older versions. Like mm-hmm. Aang, you can focus on a series just on them as their yeah. older versions, establishing Legend of Korra. Or you can even spin out and have a third avatar. Like I think they've already mm-hmm. talked about doing like a brand new avatar. Are those other characters going to be involved in that? Is this 200 years into the future? Is this 150 years into the past? Is, yeah, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. there's just so much they can do. And I feel like they're at the best place possible when yeah. when creating a, a, a future for the Absolutely. franchise. Mm-hmm. So 
I'm 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 all in. Like I can't yeah. wait to mm-hmm. ten years from now show my kids like this is the Avatar world, you know, and maybe there's an <laughs> yeah. Avatar ride at Hollywood uh, Universal, you know, because it yeah, just becomes yeah. that popular or mm-hmm. something like that, you know, and like. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like the the hype for those characters is only going to continue to grow. Mm-hmm. New fans are born every day. You know, like new people are constantly watching the show, discovering it for the first time, mm-hmm. you know, giving it that first watch through. I think there's nothing like it. There's definitely no other show in the world that's like this kind yep. of show. So I, I, I'm, a, I'm always been a huge fan and I'm always going to ask for more. So. I'm in, you know, whatever you tell, whatever news you find, please give it to me because I'm <laughs> going right, to just eat it up. I'm going to just eat it up. So, <laughs> okay. All right. What, what do you got next? I'll, I'll oh, right. I got an hour, man. The movie, our man. Our man. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of this. Um, no, no, our no, man no, is an no. extremely weird choice to headline a movie here at HBO via Warner Brothers. So Warner Brothers wants this. Technically, the character has made a few appearances in a couple of Arrowverse shows, Legends of Tomorrow and Stargirl. Oh. Uh, but he didn't exactly light the superhero entertainment world on fire. To be fair, the CW ha- was also developing an Our Man TV series back in 2013, but it never saw the light of day. Cementing the hero as a character people are interested enough in to consider having him headline projects, but not quite interesting enough for people to actually make those projects. Oh, oh wow. Interesting. Yeah. So now he's getting a movie, right? So okay. after all that speculation, I'm sure it's because all those writers back then had put in so much work into making a TV show that mm-hmm. someone was like, how about we don't make this into a TV show and instead just take all of the plot points we had, the best ones, make yeah. it into a movie. Let's go to HBO and like let's just try to see what we can make. And HBO was like, I love it. Let's make it happen. It's different. Yeah. Let's go. You know, so yeah. that's that's kind of cool. I don't know. There's not much else details on what the the general plot is going to be a lot uh, yeah. uh, about. But you know, if you're if if you're yeah. a fan of DC and Warner Brothers, I uh-huh. mean, it's hey, it's more it's more it's content coming. for you, right? They're it's, just trying yeah, it's to more content. fill out their HBO Max roster. But I mean, even though <laughs> Legends of Tomorrow and Star Girl, I mean, if it's a character from that universe, I'm gonna be like, oh, uh, and, but, and, I don't know. And I just want to say this, it's a lot of these streaming services, right? Like look at Netflix, Netflix announces a brand new movie every week now, yeah. right? That's a lot. That's 52 movies a year. Mm-hmm. HBO Max is eventually going to get to that point because mm-hmm. the money is just going to start flowing in. Yeah. So that money is just going to be redirected right back into making more content. Absolutely. So you're going to get all these bizarre TV shows and movies that, you know, kind well, of talk yeah, about these properties that no nobody really wanted Ask. to explore or generally was like hey we you know that everybody's gonna love that so they're gonna mm-hmm. take a lot more risks so you're gonna see a lot of more bizarre things a lot of things that maybe were in the vault and they're like hey let's tap into that we have some money now mm-hmm. so I, i'm very excited for the future i think in the next 10 years like it there is it's already overly saturated now but yeah. it, give it another 10 years and this shit's gonna be like ads <laughs> yeah. out the ass you know like <laughs> yeah. everywhere yes, it's gonna be like dude. new show new show new show new show i know show. i get everywhere, so many already, everywhere, man. everywhere so even, i just i can only imagine what it's really gonna be and like then it even it's getting worse when they combine with like gaming services like xbox and ps4 because i know even disney plus is connecting with xbox i didn't know how that's a thing but you know like the falcon had some ads with xbox and now on the xbox you see disney plus ads so it's crazy the connection there you know there's so much flooding in but absolutely Continuing on here, I got some anime news. This is this I got two of these, right? These are big ones. Uh, new info on the third My Hero Academia movie is reportedly coming March 27th during season five's season five's premiere. So that's something oh, wow. to look forward to a whole movie. And then we also have uh, a live action One Piece, uh, which is a movie. Uh, it's it's coming to Netflix. The show winner. Oh, it's a show. Sorry, it's a live action show called One Piece. It's of course an anime that many people know, but I'm not too familiar with it. But it's coming to Netflix showrunner says they haven't stopped working on the series despite production delays due to covid so hey it's on the way it's coming for those of you one piece fans out there look forward to that netflix like i said netflix is just pumping out anime content and you know they're trying to kick down uh crunchy rolls tower reign of tower wait sorry tower. absolutely What's it i mean <laughs> even the fact that they're making a he's all that remake that is a she's all that remake, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. but it's called he's all that. Yeah, the gender with swap. Addison Ray oh, at Netflix. Oh, man. Tanner Buchanan, Rachel Lay. Mm-hmm. It just it's just interesting. Netflix is just I'm telling you, they're just throwing money at whatever they think might land. Like, yeah. hey, there's a yeah. TikTok person. She's pretty famous there. Pull her in. Like, just for the name, absolutely. It's just weird. for the name, exactly. Mm-hmm. Just for the clout. And um, I'm interested. 
to hear more about when that comes out and see if it actually is good or yeah, not. Yeah. But um, I want to talk about something interesting here coming out of Disney Plus. Not necessarily Disney Plus, more about one of the actors, Sebastian okay. Stan, the Falcon and the Winter oh, Soldier. Yes. More specifically, the Winter Soldier says here that he struggled to pay rent after Captain America, the first Avenger, came out. This man was poor. This man didn't have no money. And I'm just like, you see this so often with actors mm -hmm. who land such a major role. They were on the brink of basically not having anything, you know, yeah. and mm -hmm. like Tiffany Haddish. She, I think she had like 13 cents or something when she landed um, one of like her major pro, I think a yeah. girl's trip or, or she one just had those, a big, yeah, yeah. I think she was living in her car. Um, and then like, uh, what's his name? What's that dude? Uh, Kevin Hart saw her there and like okay. try to help her. But it's just like, you see this a lot, like artists struggling, starving artists, legitimately struggling. And then they hit this big break. And it's sad that even up, after yeah. the movie came out, he struggled to pay his rent. So yeah, it probably wasn't he wa probably wasn't paid out until a couple of weeks after the movie became mm -hmm. a big hit. Yeah. Um, and then they were like, "Bucky, we're bringing you back. You're now the Winter Soldier." Yeah. Oh my gosh, five hundred thousand dollars. You know, know like that'd be so probably not that much because he was he was a side character. Yeah. But you know, I think the first movie that everybody makes, they said it's like three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, like Iron okay. Man, Thor. Captain America, Tom just Holland, skyrockets like, from there. The, the, your, your, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's your initial for your standalone, and then it just builds off of that. Boom, boom. Wow. One million dollars, ten million dollars, twenty-four million dollars, yeah. mm -hmm. twenty-nine million dollars for f five minutes in a in Spider-Man: Homecoming, <laughs> Iron Man. Yeah. Freaking Tony Stark is crazy, dude. Like, that's, yeah, that, that's that to me is just. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyways, I also want to mention this. Uh, before I tap back into you, Venom 2 has now crawled to the fall while Fast and the Furious 9 has zoomed to July. Remember, they were both on the oh, same date. They split up. Now they Dang. bloop. One of them went Dang. up, one of them went down, okay. which I don't understand why one of them didn't just keep the date. But yeah. I guess they were like, look, nobody can have it. Yeah. <laughs> separate far. We need both of them to be successful. Well, that's OK. Well, definitely looking forward to those. But we'll see. Anyways. Uh, I have one last big headline here, then I'm going to get more into light news here. So here's my big headline. Daniel Radcliffe is going to be playing a villain in a film called The Lost City of D, starring okay. Sandra Bullock and Shannon Tatum. The story is about a romance novelist played by Bullock uh, in a, on a book tour with her cover, mo cover model, who's played by Tatum, is interrupted by a kidnapping, and this is an action-slash-comedy uh, film. So that's okay. really kind of a short summary, kind of fast, but... That's all I got from that one, but still kind of funny to hear about those actors all combined together. Yeah, like no, I, 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 if it's a comedy, I think it'll be fun. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I know you have this one as well, this Black Widow update, so I'll let oh, you yeah, take yeah. it. Okay. Um, but I want to jump back in here if we're still talking about Marvel. Chris Evans is not coming back, apparently, according to Kevin Feige. A rarely answer, he said, I rarely answer no to anything anymore because things are always surprising me with what happens. But that rumor, I think, was dispelled rather quickly by the man himself. Yeah. And yep. I was really, um, I was a little sad about that because I was like, what, Chris Evans? Like, maybe just like a small cameo like Iron Man or something like that, like how um, uh -huh. RDJ did that. And um, nah, he said he's done. Yeah. So. It's unfortunate to hear, but it, it has to happen. You know what I mean? They, these actors, I mean, maybe maybe in the future, who knows? But at this point, you got to give it a break now because it's time for other heroes to shine, other actors to take places. And, you know, like Sam Wilson with the story now, I want Sam Wilson is my Captain America now, and I'm ready to see him get the shield, take it back from John Walker, and be the hero he's meant to be. So I'm excited. Absolutely. Right and, and when we do <laughs> see that moment, I think a lot of people are going to cry, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah, he finally awesome. felt like he deserved it. And Absolutely. I think that that's going to be a very powerful moment. I don't know when we'll see it. Maybe episode mm -hmm. five, maybe episode six, maybe sooner because mm -hmm. Zemo's already planning and he's already plotting and that she's <laughs> yeah. just going to get crazy. Yeah. Um, I want to I want to talk about this next article. This one's a little bit longer. It says Lucasfilm in need of a cleanup crew once Kathleen Kennedy leaves. Ooh. Kathleen Kennedy is the president at Lucasfilm mm -hmm. and it's basically saying when Kathleen Kennedy finally leaves it's widely thought that whoever takes her place will need to bring in significant resources to manage potential fallout as well as institute better social media regulations for employees oh. in essence they're going to need a social media slash workplace politics cleanup crew <laughs> now we sense. obviously know about Gina Carano <laughs> it says here uh -huh. that the Carano fiasco has pushed the Mandalorian season three debut all the way out until possibly mid 2023. Now we were oh. supposed to get this next year. Yeah. If not this fall, weren't we supposed to get it? No. Cause we're getting book of Boba Fett. And then they said it yeah, was, re uh, it's going right to be released after, a little yeah. bit like 2022, early 2022. And now it's yeah. getting pushed 
a year and a half longer mm -hmm. just for Mando season three. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, they're saying Carano and Baby Yoda are not going to be in season three. So mm -hmm. they just cut them out. And now they're saying this is the craziest part. But things are getting worse for the content creators of Star Wars, not better. The latest scuttlebutt is that Lucasfilms is having a very difficult time getting new directors to come on board with any project not linked to Jon Favreau. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Apparently, <laughs> apparently they wanted Zack Snyder, but they'd yeah. have like, you know, they, they obviously wanted him. Like they even tried yeah. to go mm -hmm. after him. But that Jeez. door doesn't seem to be opening anytime soon, according uh -huh. to Zack Snyder. Um, and according to other people involved in the industry, and it says no matter how much money Lucasfilms can throw at professional filmmakers, they've already seen the poor treatment given to a slew of prior directors, and they're not eager to be invited into the same environment. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. Sounds well, intense. I think the, the crazy thing about this is that you, you forget how often like a president or someone like a Feige or a Kathleen Kennedy has such huge influence over a company, you know? And like there's there's a lot of management to be... Uh, taken over because I know like you said right. people were saying oh Kathleen Kennedy is gonna be I don't know where I heard this I don't know if it was from you or from a video I was watching I'm kind of I'm mixing it up but they were saying Kathleen Kennedy is gonna be the president for years and years just to come that's what they had said but people were saying no no Kathleen Kennedy might not be the president for a year or two years from now because she's gonna be she's gonna be out and replaced fast you know because right they, like you, you you did good to people were saying you did good to establish like re bring it back in culture but when it comes to the story wise and more of the what people want yeah, audience yeah, yeah. wants that needs to be fixed so right I, i'm 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 definitely looking forward to a change of management you know i have nothing against kathleen personally i don't but i'm looking forward to come on let's let's get something new a new face here new new minds to see what they can bring with new stories and a whole new skywalker saga a different you know what i mean that's what no I mean. more skywalker sagas i mean I'm a different, fucking done a new, with that. A, a new <laughs> Um, I saga, hear you though. <laughs> I hear you. A new trilogy yeah, a new or trilogy, something yeah. different. I think um, it's crazy because I remember that they had said that they are not going to make any big trilogies until 2023. So I'm curious to know if that year is just going to be big for Star Wars. Once again, this is this article's not even specifically saying she's leaving. It's just yeah. saying yeah. that if she does end up leaving, whoever yeah. takes over is just going to have a lot of stuff to clean up. Um, but moving on from that, hmm. there's a new show coming to Peacock. Obviously, if you have Peacock, congrats. If you don't have Peacock, <laughs> congrats. Because you don't need another streaming service. Uh, Will Forte, the, the Last Man on Earth, now starring in a very similar like show called Expiration Date. It's a drama series about a grieving man who buys a life insurance policy that covers suicide. Right, so he he's looks like he has his intentions mm -hmm. out um, as long as it's not carried out within one year. And so basically, the whole show is going to follow how he spends that final year on Earth. Kind of an interesting um, premise for a show, I think. Um, and definitely Peacock kind of stretching themselves to try something different. Okay. All right. um, compared to what we see, you know, as their original kind of shows. This yeah, is more yeah. of a dramatic uh, take on it. So I think that's mm -hmm. exciting. I think that's fun. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, I just have light news here. I'll get through some of it because I know you still have a couple of headlines there. Let's see. We're starting off a simple one. Tenet is coming to HBO Max on May 1st, which mm. is, that's pretty great. You get to see free if you have HBO Max now. As well as Tenet is also re-releasing in movie theaters now because they're opening them up back up and they're like hey it's coming back to theaters so go show your support if you want to you know support Christopher Nolan and technically Warner Brothers too <laughs> but I don't know I might see it in a theater because it's kind of cool but I, I've seen it so many times now on DVD I, I bought the I bought it online that I'm like uh, about my film that's that <laughs> I got and then you. we and then we also have some uh, movie release dates for September I wanted to bring up September's release date for this year is going to be huge. As of now, who knows? Delays could come. September 3rd, we have Resident Evil, the, the reboot that we've been talking about a lot on this show, as well as yeah. on the same day, a new Jackass movie, the fourth film. So What? <laughs> that's kind of a random. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're making, they're make, what? I think so. But because I thought we talked about it where they didn't have the same actor. One of the actors had a contract that he couldn't be in it or something like that. He broke I don't remember. I don't remember no? talking about Jackass I mean, Four. I'll be okay. honest. <laughs> I'll be really honest. Yeah, yeah. I just do not remember that. Okay. Um, that's look, crazy, dude. Yeah. If you want to look crazy. it up while I'm talking about, it, you can. Um, but it's okay. Anyways, and then we have the tenth, uh, Malignant. Malignant. I don't know what that was. About. I think that was a Disney film. I believe. I'm not sure. Um, and then we have the seventeenth, Venom Two. But now yep. this might. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's right. And then we have on that same day. Death on the Nile, the 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 mystery film from uh, Agatha Christie, the book. You know how we had a uh, Murder on the Orient Express. This is a sequel. Death on the Nile, same day. 
And then on the 24th, we have The Many Saints of Newark, which is coming out as well on uh, HBO Max. And um, we, we've is, seen Death, them is they... Death on the Nile a sequel? I don't think that's a sequel. Is that just another book of hers? Well, or is that I a mean, sequel it's, to it's, Murder on the Orient Express? It's, it's like they're following it's, the same detective. It's the same actor, yeah. The same detective, it. but it's a whole new cast of, you know, a murder. It's movie. a whole new it's story. Same, gotcha. Yeah, okay. It's, it's that's connected. cool. That is exciting. Yeah. So it is yeah. a sequel. Um, I want to talk here. Lionsgate confirms Keanu Reeves for John Wick 5. And is going nice. to be filmed back to back with the fourth installment, which is very exciting. Um, awesome. John Wick awesome. Four was scheduled to hit theaters the twenty first of May this year, but has actually been moved to next year, May twenty seventh, twenty twenty two, due the due to the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. But coronavirus isn't the only thing that is messing things up for people. Apparently, Brad Pitt's not having a pretty good week this week because uh -oh. things are getting rocky in his world. Angelina Jolie and him are fighting. For their kids right they've, they've been divorced for a couple of years uh -huh. but they're still in the custody battle for their six children and apparently angelina jolie this week said that he she's open to testifying the kids are open to testifying for spousal abuse and what? i'm assuming some form of like assault involved and brad pitt is heartbroken over the leak you know from the camp of angelina yeah. jolie and he even came out and said that she's doing this to sway public opinion before the official like decision is made with the trial. Yeah. And I could totally see that. Absolutely. I could totally see that. Yeah. But like, if he did do some form of abuse to Angelina, then I'm more likely to side with her on this than I yeah. am if, because you're upset that <laughs> yeah, she's yeah. saying and she's talking about it. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah. like, dude, well, you fucking did it. You know, yeah. so it's like, I'm more surprised that this is coming out. Like, I don't think it's going to end up ruining Brad Pitt by any means, but it's definitely interesting to hear. And he's open about it. He said he's talked about his, his abuse of drugs in the past and his okay. alcohol addiction. And so it's a it's clear that these are just the repercussions from that. But if yeah. it costs him his kids, it's going to yeah. be sad. I don't know. You know, custody battles are difficult because you always got to, like, find the, the split of time. And, you know, mm -hmm. obviously, that where do the kids want to go? And sometimes it's not up to them. And it's up to the, the parents. And are they actually going to be parents? Or are they mm -hmm. going to be focused on being a superstar in the yeah. public world? You know, being a, a celebrity and an actor? You know, Angelina Jolie doesn't do that many projects anymore because she is focused on her family. But Brad Pitt doesn't stop. That man does not yeah. stop. He, he just through. keeps going. So those were pretty much my major stories. I got three light news, but I'm going to let you finish before okay. we head back to me. All right. Well, let's see what we have right here. The Black Widow. I know you had this one, too. The theatrical release. For those of you that are looking forward to whether this is coming out on Disney Plus or in the theaters, the CEO of Disney, Bob Chapek, recently said that, that the decision on whether or not they're going to release it in theaters or Disney Plus will be a last-minute decision. Mm -hmm. So that's confirmed from the CEO. So... It's almost like we're not going to know until it's like how COVID looks and how the theaters are opening up and the I guess box office for some of these films. Yeah, like as of right now, as of right now, they're saying May 7th in theaters. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But they're, I, I agree with what you're talking about because it's the same stuff. They're saying they might release it like a week before on Disney Plus. Like a or, hybrid, right? As they say. Yeah. Hybrid. Like they might just do a hybrid where it's like yeah. theaters and Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. But. I just hope if they do the Disney Plus route, they're not like Disney needs to stop charging for their films. Yes. Like your films are not that good Agreed. for you to charge me extra. Like get the fuck out of here. Like it's just it's just outrageous because they make so much money. You know, it's like yeah. you're already making so much money off of so many people. Yeah. I get it. Your film's expensive, but you don't deserve the right to just continuously like s mm. like basically they like milk the shit out of you for no, everything. Yeah. You know, Every it's, little it's, yep. it's mm -hmm. bad. I just don't like that. I don't think that's good <laughs> capitalism, but. <laughs> whatever i'm not right. the disney heads yeah, yeah. trying to go after the profit you know no, yeah, I, I get it you. i get yeah. it all right uh, <sighs> continuing on here we have some more marvel news Ch uh chiwetel ejiofar confirms that he's joined the doctor strange 2 shooting in london he confirmed that recently that he's there he says he's shooting that he doesn't know too much about what's going on but of course keeping it all a secret as well as Is he, was Freeman. he the villain was he the, the yeah, guy at played, the end right he played Mordo. Well, Mordo, he wasn't really his yeah. villain. He was he was like the guy who taught Doctor Strange everything, really. But he turned H1. evil at the very end. But at the end, he kind of left, and he was like, "No more sorcerers." That was the end credit scene. So he might yeah. go like hybrid bad, kind of like his own you, way. You think yeah. him and Wanda? Uh no, I think he's gonna be like a sub subplot. I think he's gonna be so sub to Wanda's story. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. But, I hear. Uh, we also have Martin Freeman. He's gonna be in Black Panther too. That's confirmed from himself. He says that's he has cool. no idea what the premise is, and he said, "All I know is that I'm in it." <laughs> so that's good to hear. I love <laughs> that's Martin. Fun. I love that's Martin fun. Freeman, so I love to see him in there. And then we have uh, production begins on a couple films like Sonic Sonic Two. Oh, I think you said that one already, right? You said yeah, Sonic, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sonic Two begins. 
Uh, and then we have the Russo Brothers, The Gray Man on Netflix, that big, huge film has started production with Chris Evans, Ryan Gosling, and Ana de Armas, and some other huge actors. I think this is Netflix's hugest, biggest budgeted film, I believe. As yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think we've discussed it a little bit before, that's, but that's cool. It started production. Yeah, I can't wait for a trailer. I'm gonna. Oh man, that's gonna be awesome. Eat that's it, it up. For, yeah, that's it for me. What do you got, bro? Um, <laughs> so I got three things here left before we get into our recommendations. King of the Hill has revival mm -hmm. talks after 15 years. Okay, that's crazy. That's mm -hmm. crazy. Or no, wait, no. It says here it's set to be 15 years. So from mm -hmm. the last episode, it'll be like 15 years later, I guess. Yeah. Um, that's cool. Crazy to think that that show would come back. Um, so I'm, this is what I'm talking about. Like everything can just come back. Like in this yeah. modern age of streaming, it's like they're just gonna be tapping into everything they got. Star mm -hmm. Wars. George Lucas apparently stole the film. Uh, his original Star Wars film from Warner Brothers so that they couldn't change it because apparently George Lucas, everybody knows he's notorious for going back and making mm -hmm. edits to his prior films. And then yeah. what happened to the very first original that had that, you know, the puppeteer Yoda and all that and <laughs> yeah. all that deal you know, without the CGI. He mm -hmm. apparently stole the original so that Warner Brothers wouldn't be able to change it and him have that first mm -hmm. copy that he ever made, which is kind of interesting uh, yeah. little tidbit from George Lucas mm -hmm. there. Um, you think he should run and take over after Kathleen Kennedy? You think they'll maybe bring hey, him in? Who knows? I, I love his cringiness. And if it's cringy, I don't even think it's cringy. But I love, yeah, I'm all in right. for that. I would love I'm, to make it come back. I don't know if it will happen. Sound off in the comments, please, because I'm curious to mm -hmm. know the people's thoughts on that. And finally, I have here Kingsley Ben Adir to star in Marvel's Secret Invasion. We got a little oh, casting right. news here at mm -hmm. the end. Um, but yeah, that wraps us up as far as our news for the episode. It kind of flew by or it didn't even feel like I was yeah. talking about so many shows because there's just so many things and it just flowed perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, before we get into our recommendations, if you guys are listening to all our audio platforms, like we said at the beginning, thank you so much. Uh, feel free to leave a review if you've enjoyed the show. Leave a like, subscribe if you're on YouTube. And we enjoy doing the show always. Freeze Frame is such a Absolutely. fun blast every week. It's just so much fun. Um, Ryder, what's your recommendation for the week? Let's see. For me, recommendations are always hard because I always yeah. I always go blank on them because I'm only watching like three shows, you know. So if I can right, recommend right. something, it's something older that I've watched. So I'm gonna recommend Silicon Valley. I recommend that one a long time ago on like mm -hmm. a, a show that we did. You know what's what was it called? What's popping? <laughs> <It was laughs> yeah, a, exactly. Yeah, exactly. it was a long time ago. But yeah, Silicon Valley. It's on HBO. It's on HBO Max. It's a great one about creators trying to create an app, and it's funny. Just a good time. So I definitely recommend check that one out. But absolutely. <laughs> Um, I'm going to go in a, a big one and I, I hope people don't sleep on it, especially if you have HBO max Zack Snyder's justice league. I yes. can't recommend it even more. Like it, it is the it ultimate superhero movie in my eyes, better than Avengers, better than Endgame. Oh. I think it's, okay. it's in my okay. opinion, it's just different. It's very yeah. different, yeah. but like it, 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 it's just like nothing like a Marvel film. Like you're not going to get those little, like there are little jokes and there's like a little emotion, but it's a very much action packed film that mm -hmm. delivers in so many ways to fans yeah. that yeah, yeah yeah you can come sit here and compare films all day but i think it's so different that like i fall in love with this more than i think yeah. i i did with love, like marvel because marvel was more, so right? much build up and, and over like years the t 10 years and this is just like here's one film that's four hours and it just sucks you into a world yeah. you know and you love it mm -hmm. um so if you have hbo max and like you don't have anything to watch tonight just take a out. take a peek because I think you're gonna fall <laughs> yeah. in love. My friend was like, I, I was talking to my buddy and he was just like, dude, I haven't watched any of it. I haven't seen any trailers. I haven't even like mm -hmm. watched the old one. And I was like, bro. Oh, and he said he he got sucked right in. He was like, what was great about it? And I didn't mention this in our review. And I also want to say, if you finish the movie after you're done, go check out the strictly casual review. I know I'm hyping it up a lot because it was fun and I edited huh. it. But yeah. It didn't feel like a Batman movie, which I feel like always happens yeah. when Batman's in a movie. Mm -hmm. You know, you always Absolutely. are drawn to Batman like, oh, what's he going to do? What's his big story plot? But in this one, it felt like it Everyone. was so perfectly spread out between all the characters that you're he becomes a part of the team and not just Absolutely. a standalone film about him. Mm -hmm. Although you do, you know, you see Alfred, you see the Batcave, you see yeah. all these elements of his life. You're not like completely drawn to his storyline just solely. And I think that that's the part that drew me into the movie mm -hmm. more than anything, because you know, if you have Batman in a movie, I'm just instantly like, this is like a Batman movie, you know? And it's like, yeah. it didn't feel that way. It felt like a Justice League movie. Every character got their time. Every character deserved their story arc. And I just, 
I can't rave about it anymore <laughs> yeah. because yeah, my head will explode. I love yeah, it too yeah. much. But anyways, that's my recommendation. Go check it out. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Freeze Frame. We love this. We love you. And we love Zack Snyder's Snyderverse. Restore the Snyderverse. I said I wasn't going to talk about it, but no. I lied. Yeah, <laughs> I love yeah, I love it too much. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we want to thank you guys for listening. And we appreciate all the comments, too. Because we get to stay and connect, you know, we get to connect with you guys. And that's the best thing about this is getting to know you all. Absolutely. And what you love about movies and TV. And we love giving you all the updates because this is this is fun. So, <laughs> Absolutely. Anyways, but yeah, I guess that's it for me. You can close this off. That's it for us, bro. That's it for everything. We're done. The Have episode is over. Have this was day. episode 10. This was a big one. You know, oh, we yeah, talked about American Horror Story reaching season 10. We're on episode 10, and we're just glad to be here. So thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys next week, and we will have all the news then. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone.